Greetings and welcome um, to the first kit we're going to look at in 2023. Wow. So this will be the first Dream Project kit of 2023. Um, I am working on other aircraft and other models at the same time and we'll come to that. And I'm going to do a separate sort of channel update video, um, maybe today, maybe tomorrow, just updating on what's going on, what the plans are, that sort of thing, you know, what sort of things basically to look forward to. Okay, so I uh, just thought I'd kick off though because just in case I don't get that video done, I want you all to have a, a chance to have a look at this first before we come to it. Now this, this kit um, gained a lot of interest, <laughs> a lot of, of course a lot of flowers gained a lot of interest uh, on last Wednesday's stream. Lots of euphemisms being made about it and I did say okay well look it's so popular we'll, we'll make that the first stream kit to build. So, it's, as you can see, it's part of the FX Classics range. Uh, that lovely painted box art that I'm such a fan of. It nicely, nicely printed onto, onto the cardboard here. Price 14 99 Now, I've had a look online. Obviously, this came from the Midland Air Museum. I've had a look online. The price is comparable, it's competitive, to my mind, with what else is out there. Quite a lot, to me, you know, so basically, yeah. That's all, that was all to absolve the Midland Air Museum, but you know, there's no accusation there of them inflating the price. I think they, you know, they, they are competitive with what this aircraft is going for online. But for a single engined, a fairly small aeroplane, that's a fair chunk. When Airfix is selling their more up to date tooling of the Hurricane with paints and everything for 12 quid, that's, that's, that's the comparison I'm making there. So it's the same company, yeah. But anyway. The Beaver. Not, it's not a model I've ever built before, so underneath you've got the different warnings and things, but you can see there, uh, model design and tooling, 1971, the illustration was from 1971, and freshly packed last year and made in India, and Cartograph have done the transfers for it. It's a bit of blurb information there about the Beaver, you can... So I'll pause that and look, read it if you like. And then you've got the two options in the kit. There, I'll be doing option A. You can see all the recommended paints there, which I'll largely be ignoring. Right, so I've literally just cut the tape. I've not opened the box at all. This is a interesting feel for me. I'm, I'm actually standing up to do this. So uh, I've had it recommended to me by someone that's standing up. Actually, it's slightly better for you when you're doing this sort of thing. So, uh, yeah, here we are. Um, the kit comes in one big plastic bag, it seems. It does look like the transparencies do have their own bag, so I'll open that in a second, get the scissors. Uh, so I'll cut up the instruction sheet, see the transfers there. So again, you get a little blur about the aeroplane. Again, you can pause that and read it. I'll throw it in the different languages, shall I? There we are. So pause it and read it in the language of your choice. No, you can even read it in German if you wanted to. Right, so of course, yeah, sorry, this is um, part of the Vintage Classic right now, if it's happy to be re-releasing. So if you open it up, first thing you see is option A, from Middle Wallop in Hampshire. Now you've got it fitted with the skis there. I'm gonna do it with, without skis. Um, but more what well, basically I'm gonna, Basically, going to copy the copy the box. Um, uh, without the skis, I like I like it like that. I was toying with doing this in a civilian scheme, but um, I'm, I'm really I'm more tempted now to do an out of the box build. Um, so yes, brown earth, dark earth, dark earth and dark green. Based on painting the Lancaster at the minute. <laughs> so uh, yes, we know we have those clothes in hand. So we might as well continue on. Option B is a US Army aircraft from the 1960s with floats. Nice to give you the option for that in the same model. That's pretty cool. You're off to olive drive all over. Essentially a World War II scheme apart from the stars and, and bars rather than star and bar. There, uh, noting US Air Force aircraft as opposed to US Army Air Corps. Okay, so the instructions. So this is literally a whole lot you're seeing in one go there. 
So a reasonably compact looking cockpit. There. Indicating the choice of the water rudder, well not the water rudder, but the, the cover for the tail wheel or tail wheel. I'm not saying anything about alternate air speed, so make sure you study the instructions. Um, windows to go in from the inside for the door, looks like you can have the choose to have the cabin door open or close though to the, the rear cabin. Um, wings fairly simple, we have to watch out for those little uh, pieces of the flaps. I don't know if that means we've got posable flaps or not, or it just no, it doesn't look like it. No, it's just actually how to make it look a bit better. better. Propeller and engine. So you've only got the two blade propeller version of this aircraft, there is a three blade version of the Beaver. Uh, building the floats or the undercart. So again, make sure you study your instructions well in the version you want to do. And then final assembly there, but all, all coming together. So it shouldn't take long to do on stream, to be honest. Um, I won't be doing this on your flights, we're going to leave the pilot figure out. So it literally will just be a case of building as much of that as I dare. And then, uh, you know, priming it all up. Which is going to be a little bit of a strange thing when it comes to the streams. I'll just, we'll just mention this now and I'll re-go over it properly in more detail in the, in the channel update is I will actually be nipping outside to spray things. So I'll go outside, spray it, and we'll wait for it to dry. And we'll just sit and chat, for, yarn for a bit while it dries, and then... So you're literally seeing the whole build. Um, that's, that's, I think that's just the best way I can think of doing it, because otherwise, um, in the past, I have been tempted to start the kits. I mean, I could use that time, maybe. We'll see what happens. Um, maybe to work on other projects I've already got going. But so uh, yeah, so I am, pl I am playing to prime, prime live basically. Um, right. So yes, yeah, so that's that's basically it. So let's have a quick look at the parts. Um, but uh, first up are the transfers. Now in the US you say decals or decals or whatever, but yes, transfers is is the term I'm going to use on here. So there we are. They all look to be in good register. There's no. Um, Interrupt power or anything like that. Oh, looks quite nice, but that's what we expect from Cartograph. Don't. Yeah, don't feel particularly thick either, so they should go down nicely. That's pretty cool. So put them safe to one side, put them back in the instructions sheet where they came. From whence they came, shall we say. So that's it. they're protected from the, from the elephants. Right, let's get that pair of scissors over here. Fortunately, kept some to hand just in case. <laughs> That's the high boy in Hogger sending me videos now. He's been playing trains today. Which I might say with the iPad with me later. I've got to drive, I've got to pop out in a bit. I'm filming this quickly before I, I head out and about, so I uh, guess. So, first up, I won't, I won't debug these, but transparent parts, and they're looking, you know, reasonably good. The finger behind it there, you can see. So you've got the main main canopy piece there, there's one of the door pieces, there's the cargo door piece, and it's replicated again. That's awesome. There's not many clear pieces there, landing light cover and that sort of thing. The upper wing. Obviously, being an older kit, this is all raised rivets and that sort of thing. But some aircraft are in real life. Um, yes, yeah, so I've, I've taken a picture of a V17 last year, end of last year. Um, that it's, you can see all the rivets popping out uh, on it. So yeah, um, there's the locating pit holes for uh, the um, the little the little stabiliser pieces I suppose, the, the, the rods that connect from this into the, the mechanism that works, the flaps. Oh, I know what I mean, you know what I mean. I do see a couple of sink marks here and here, so if you're bothered about those sort of things you can do it. Personally, I build, an, I build a kit, warts and all, that's how I do my kits, I don't use filler at all. Um, 
Not because I can't be bothered or I don't know how, it's I enjoy, one of the things I enjoy about model making is when a new, say, Spitfires, there's, there's going to be Spitfires, new Spitfires coming out till the end of time as kits. There's never going to be the definitive, this is it, we don't need to, and no one ever needs to make another model Spitfire, someone has their own way of doing it, won't they? But each one, in theory, is a progression technology, say they're all airfix Spitfires. Um, build the FX Mark V that I had available to me in the 90s and build the FX Mark V that I built last year, you can see a huge leap in technology, how well they fit it, how well it fits together, the detail differences and that sort of thing. And that's what like, I really enjoy, so I need things like Sync Marks in there. There's a fused large half, there's the floats. Very basic interior. That was just part of the course of these, this era of kits. And again, oh, knock in the camera again. Got a bit of floor there. What I am noticing, it does seem there's going to be a minimal flash. Now, when I first assume on the wheels there, but there's not as much as I thought there would be. It's a bit of an instrument panel as well. It's a bit of a shame there's no thing to go on it because that would that would look quite nice with some, yeah. Maybe. Airfix, maybe. You keep saying what vintage kits should we do a new tool of. Maybe the Beaver. That wouldn't be a bad way. You could do some Civvy ones as well. If you could do a Civvy one, well, one in the same scheme as the civilian scheme Mark 1 and Duxford, that'd be great. That'd be cracking. I, I, I love that. I think it's gorgeous, that one. And again, still, I love this. This is De Havilland Canada, but it's still got the distinctive De Havilland tail there. I, I love the fact that that's another thing. Some of the lower wings here, so it goes to go in the rear fuse large. I assume it's the rear fuse large, but rear fuse large right at the top. Ah, it's upper fuse large, sorry. And then the engine cowling there. So that's ejector pin mark, I think, isn't it? Is that ejector pin mark? Yeah, because only one. One side, unless that is that just hatch is only on one side of the V. I need to do some research there. There's those little greebly looking good register. The plastic doesn't feel like the usual sort of soft plastic that we get from the Indian made kits. It does feel like this a bit harder, so maybe we might we might get away with this one, alright. There's If it's copyright 1971 there on the inside of the fuselage. So there we are. And the engine's looking pretty good as well. No, no flash at all on that. Apart from, oh, so sorry, there is. Just on the, the hole, really easy, easy part to uh, to fill. And there's the propeller as well, looking, looking quite nice. See, it's not, not soft at all. It's quite good, that. Not bad detail on, on there. Now, the uh, this could do with a bit of sanding, maybe just to smooth that out a bit. But yeah, not bad at all. It could be a lot worse. It could be a lot worse. I was quite, quite um, concerned initially. So that is the Howland Beaver. That's what we're going to be starting on Wednesday night. So hopefully, you'll look forward to that with me. Um, I would like to thank thank you for watching. And I'd like to thank um, the person who recommended doing the standing video for this. It's, that actually was a lot easier to see because you keep trying to peer on top of the camera and stuff. And yeah, it's actually a lot more, lot more free, and you can move maneuver your hands better. So there's a tip for anyone else want to do it. So yes, hopefully you enjoyed that. Hopefully, if you're considering the beaver, that might have helped your decision one way or the other. Uh, like I say, that's possibly too much, but. It is, it is what it is, isn't it? You either pay it or you don't. And I mean, I was obviously happy to pay it. One of the things that did influence me, is obviously picking it up for the bit of damage um, was that they have a beaver on display at the museum, a real one. And the way I like to think about it is, uh, my 14 99 obviously, they've had to pay to buy the kit in to get it into stock in the shop. But part of the, 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 the profit they've made, in theory, will go to help uh, look after the real beaver, so which it will do in a roundabout term, even if it looks after something else, which means funds are free up, and it's you know, it's a contribution towards it, keeping the aircraft. 
So, yeah, as I say, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Stay safe.